Hey guys, John here from the Strong Live Club with another presentation and one that I'm really excited uh, to present to you guys because I feel it's overlooked. This huge thing, and this is why I've given it, you know, the secret to outstanding results because I honestly feel it is, and it's not something I like to say, you know, um, dr you know, make things very dramatic, but I do feel implementing this thing that we're talking about today, and as you probably will be aware, it's the importance of sleep, how important it is that we optimize it and do the work on it, okay, and put um, a routine in place um, and habits and change habits around our sleep, uh, because if we do, then everything else is is really going to get fired up, you know, everything else is going to fall into place, and you're going to really maximize your results with your health, your fitness, your fat loss, your body compositional changes, your general health, your confidence, everything. Okay. And I'm talking not just in the gym, but outside of the gym, not just in the kitchen, prepping food and being organized with food, but in all, you know, uh, everyday life. All right. You're going to feel and see the benefits. And as I said, this props everything up. All right, so that's that's how important I see it, and that's how important you should see it. So, as we probably already know, the secret weapon is sleep, and what I'm going to go through today is some um, things to implement uh, into your sleep, pre-sleep uh, predominantly, um, and we need to be with an understanding that this is going to have to sit with the individuals. So. Uh, it, it needs to change and needs to work for you, essentially. So take these as guidelines, take it as um, some sort of a fundamental structure that you can then implement and start to create your own structure. Because we all have our own lives, we may have uh, young children in the house, you know, we, we may be working late, um, all sorts of things. So, yes, take these, but don't think they are you know, solid things that you need and you need to do all of them. You may just start to implement one or two, but change the timings and things to work for you, okay? So, first of all, why is it so important? Let's get that clear. So, I've listed a few here. There are so many more, all right? Just so many more, but I thought I'd just list some down for you, you at the moment. And it's regain focus, being focused in all aspects of your life, uh, make better choices around food. Look, if you're tired, worn out and run down, you know what it's like. You're going to make poor uh, decisions around food. You're going to grab that first thing you see, you know, just because you're hungry and you just need some energy. Increase your energy. All right. Uh, therefore, then you're going to train with more intensity. Therefore, get more better results. Become more productive at work and at home. So like I said, it's in all aspects of your life. This is going to have a positive effect on. Have better conversations. Be more present with the people around you. Again, at work, family, friends. Okay. And increase positivity. Uh, a, a positive um, uh, effect on your mindset. So this, again, this goes on and on and on. And I have had clients who have nailed this and improved their sleep and have had promotions at work. They've started to earn more money. They, as well as making phenomenal changes to their health and their body because they have addressed their sleep. So therefore they're more productive at work. They get more work done uh, in, a, in a better amount of time. Um, so, it, 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 yeah, it has such a, a positive effect on all areas of your life. So where should we start? So what we want to start looking at is a pre-bed routine. So 45 minutes to one hour before sleep. And as I said initially, this may change depending on the individual. So if you're working late, you may have half an hour. But you can still implement it. You may have 20 minutes. But again, you can still implement this, okay? So again, change this round. But this pre-bed routine is really important because of when we want to go to sleep and when we are sleeping, we want that quality of sleep to be there. It's all well and good, you know, getting home, having something to eat, watching a bit of TV, getting to bed and going to sleep. 
but the quality of sleep may not be there. And that's why you're still getting up in the morning and you may have had eight hours of sleep, you think, but the quality of sleep wasn't there. And therefore that's why you're still um, tired or lacking of energy, okay? So pre-bed routine is gonna really set you up to one, wind down, disconnect, and then also get that proper quality of sleep that's really gonna get you firing that next day. So we wanna set, first and foremost, wanna set a time that will start this routine. Whether that's, you know, optimally we're looking 45 minutes to an hour, right? But again, adapt it to you. It's a good habit to have. And then set a time that you want to be going to sleep and get consistent with that. Allow your body to start to sit into a routine. And again, I've got to take into consideration people that do late shifts uh, and are getting to bed at different times throughout the week. That's understandable. But again, even with that, set in motion a routine. So if you are going to bed later because of a late shift, what is that time? If you're going to bed early, what is that time? at least give your body the opportunity to get into a rhythm, okay? So two times that you wanna be setting that pre-bed routine when it's starting, and then when you want your head on the pillow and you're going to go to sleep. What to drop out? Now, some of these are gonna be quite understandable. You're gonna know this, but you know some things will bring your attention to a few things that you may not have known about. So caffeine, obviously, Nothing uh, post 2 p.m. Some people can have um, uh, caffeine post 2 m, 3, 3 p.m., whatever it may be, but try and keep it as early as you possibly can. We want that caffeine out the system uh, and allowing our body to be in a position to, to get sleep. Screen time. Now, this is a massive one, okay? And this is a lifestyle shift that we need to start to, to embed. Um, you know, we're always on screens, whether it's on a laptop like this, whether on, on your phone, TV, tablets, you know, and our eyes and our brains are switched on. We've got this glare um, and we're taking in information all of the time. And what is so, so important, and this is great, and I've said this to clients before, it's great to have this habit where we have times of the day where we get away from the screen. OK, if you've got kids and they can see you implementing this habit, they know that going to bed is a shut out time. It's a wind down time. It's a settled time. It's a calm time of the day and getting off of phones and anything that has high glare screen time. Get rid of it. OK, uh, you will see tremendous um, benefits for not just your energy and your sleep, but again, your concentration, conversations you're having. Uh, and particularly with children, uh, they'll be so much more calmer um, and, and, and ready for sleep as well. So that's huge. TVs, I understand people want to wind down watching a bit of TV. TV isn't as bad because it's further away. But I still think at some point within this wind down time, we should be switching the TV off as well. And certainly not having any TV in the bedroom as well. Alcohol, obvious, it's going to have. And the thing with alcohol is not only just the immediate calories that you're bringing in and you're unaware of the amount of calories that um, alcohol can give you, um, but it's that knock-on effect, the knock-on effect of poor sleep through alcohol, that next day of feeling low on energy and three, four steps behind, okay? Anything work-related, obviously, this is going to rise uh, – raise your, your, your stress levels. So we're going to be taking away uh, work-related stuff. And that's why it's important to get rid of that phone, get rid of the laptop and everything and step away from anything work-related. So what do we want to bring in? Okay, so carbs. Carbohydrates are really going to help with to get you feeling a little bit more satisfied with your last meal of the day and get ready for sleep. And as you know, if you've eaten some carbohydrates or overeaten carbs, you do feel a little bit, you know, um, tired. Your, your eyes are a bit heavier. Um, so it's a good one to, to bring in. I always like with the food and the nutrition, you would have heard me say uh, in the past, bring your carbs later on in the day. Most people can train towards the end of the day. And also you want to sit around a table uh, with as a family to eat carbohydrates is, is always quite um, prevalent in those e evening meals. But it will also get you to, to wind down as well. 
Also, you may have like a pre-bed little snack. I always used to like um, some um, natural oats with some uh, chocolate whey protein in and a nice uh, cube of dark chocolate. Um, boiling water, it was almost like my pre-bed thing and it just puts me to sleep. Uh, some people like some rice cakes um, with some peanut butter on, something like that, just to get you uh, feeling like you're winding down for bed. Also, a good one is a decaffeinated hot drink, like hot chocolate or something like that. Again, it's nice, a bit carby and can and, and really kind of settle you down. And then looking at bringing in a bath or a shower. If you're having a bath, some Epsom salts would be really good. And just spoil yourself. Just spend some time just winding down whatever time you have available. If it's a shower, if you haven't got as much time, then great. Uh, have some nice uh, settling um uh, balms that you can have for showers and things like shower gels and things like that that are settling for the evening time uh, and a book to read in bed um, so instead of the, the, you know the phone it's uh, a book and as you will probably know if you've ever written a uh, written uh, read a book in in bed that two three pages in you can really start to feel your eyes going and you're really starting to drop off and I would just pick a book up that you're really interested in, whether that's fiction or whether that's self-development, uh, but anything you're really interested in. And that can really help you get off to sleep. Now, let's look at the optimal sleeping conditions. Once we're in the bedroom, OK, we need a, a cool temperature. So nothing too hot and uh, warm, nothing too cold, just something that makes you feel comfortable. OK. We want to make it as dark as possible, so no lights, um, nothing from external lights on the streets, so and nice blacked out uh, windows from the uh, some good curtains or whatever it may be. Obviously, no phone. I know a lot of people can sleep with the phone next to their head. As soon as an email comes through or a notification comes through, it's going to shine up, okay, and that's going to be very distracting and it's going to keep you switched on. So uh, if we can get the phone out of the room, if you're not happy with that, then put it into a drawer next to you so it's out the way and we're not getting any of those glares. And just refer back to uh, an old, basically an old um, alarm clock. Obviously, uh, no TV uh, as well. We want this room a place of calmness and, um, and, and an area of of. of you know, settling down and getting ready for sleep. So we don't want any TV. Some of the considerations you might want to bring in like a pillow mist, like lavender, uh, meditation apps. Now, meditation apps are obviously going to be using your phone. Uh, but again, if it's going to help you, um, they, they can be really, really helpful. Things like Calm and there's many other ones out there that you can look at uh, that have some meditational relaxation um, um, kind of uh, stories and things like that. Um, so look into that if you need be, if you need to, um, they could be really, really helpful for you. But basically, we want to be creating a routine that works best for you, and then you can stay consistent, just like the nutrition, just like the training. Um, to see great results, we need to be consistent. So again, create that routine that works best for you. Now, only when those things are in place, I would only ever look at any sort of supplementation. If you know me by now, I think we can um, get as everything that we need through lifestyle, through exercise, through food. But if we want to plug some holes and, and, ha and have some help um, and assistance, we can look at that. Uh, but again, only when everything is as optimal as possible, we can look at some melatonin is really helpful, magnesium, passion flow, and there are a host of other things as well. But just be very careful when bringing a supplementation in because you don't want to be bringing it in just because you haven't addressed, you haven't addressed the lifestyle aspect yet. So address everything that I spoke about and then you can start looking at bringing a supplementation in if you feel you need that little bit more assistance. So, guys, I hope that has been helpful. It is by on one of the most important things you can do today and start to implement if you're really serious about transforming your health, your body and your well-being and really start seeing the results again, not just in your health and your body, but in all areas 
of your life. Okay. Hope that's been helpful, guys. And if you have any more questions around this, please let me know.